Hi, welcome to the virtual orientation for the J-Feather 27 BHB by Jayco. We're going to start orientation on the outside of the RV and we're going to begin at the front. The first thing that we're going to mention or talk about will be the front door side storage compartment. You will notice that there's no latches anymore. It is all magnetic, nice and slick. The front storage compartment is a pass-through compartment. As you can see, we have the setup for your grill. Uh, this post is put into this port here. At the moment, all of the grills are actually on back order. So we don't actually have a grill to show you the setup. But this post goes in that hole. This post goes in the end of that one. Also in this front storage compartment, we have the crank for your stabilization jack and the crank for your electric tongue jack. Also under here, you'll see the switching here. That is for the front running lights. As well, we have a tire pressure gauge. If we back up from the storage compartment, and take a look at the side marker light here. We'll notice that it looks a little thicker than normal. And there's this extra piece on here. These side marker lights are wired for uh, side view cameras. Uh, similar to what uh, you've seen in the back of some of the Jayco's for a while, the rear view camera. Uh, these can be purchased separately and allow you to uh, see the sides of your RV while you're driving from inside the tow vehicle on a uh, screen that is plugged into the auxiliary uh, power port in your uh, tow vehicle. So if we drop down, you'll notice we have one of four stabilization jacks located on the four corners of the trailer. The trailer should always be fully level and these just snugged up to, snugged up to the ground to stabilize. Depending on the surface that you are camping on or using your RV on, you may need to have some blocking as well. For example, if this corner was a little lower and you put this all the way down, it still might not touch the ground. So the best thing to use would maybe be some six by sixes, one for each corner of the trailer. And that way you'll know that you always have the ability to make contact with the ground and stabilize the RV. As we work away around the front, we'll make note of the battery storage area. And you'll notice that there is a, a battery sitting on the ground there. That is mainly mostly just for the uh, video purposes. There's not a battery on this unit yet. It's not ready to go. Normally it would sit up here on the rails inside a battery box. And then right in front of that is your propane storage. And you'll see we have the propane cover and it has this access panel here. You flip these forward after you've unscrewed them. And then you can flip this open and this will give you access to turn the bottles on and off. However, we would like to see everything. So, so now that we can fully see your double 30 pound bottle system, you can also see that it's connected by, via a crossover regulator. At the moment, you can see that the handle of the regulator is pointing to this tank. So what this means is, when the pressure in this tank drops below a predetermined amount, determined by the regulator and not adjustable, it will automatically cross over and draw from this 30 pound bottle, regardless of where this handle is pointing. What that means is if you're running a furnace in the fall or on a cold night, you don't have to get out and manually switch it over in the middle of the night. Right to the very front here, we'll see your electric tongue jack. It has a loading light, which can be handy for those night hitch-ups. And we have the switching 
to electrically move the jack up or down. And then right on top here, we have this port that you can remove. And inside you'll see access to use the manual crank in the front storage compartment that I showed you earlier. And you can crank the uh, tongue up and down. That way you're never stuck with the, the ability to bring the tongue up or down or bring it on or off your vehicle. So we continue around the front. The next thing we'll come to is your safety breakaway switch. So this safety breakaway switch is connected on the loop end to the tow vehicle and then to a pin that is attached into this body or housing attached to the frame of your RV. In the event that the tow vehicle is separated from the RV, this pin will be pulled and engage the trailer brakes. Now I have seen on occasion where during hitch up, this pin is pulled, but only partially. So you may not be aware that it's pulled and there it could be engaging the trailer brakes without you realizing that this was the reason why. So if you find that your brakes are, are on or it's your brakes are actually on, then uh, come here and just make sure that this is fully seated inside the housing here. And then if, if it's not, that should fix, fix your issue. We're gonna slide just a little bit to my right and take a look at your pre-wired solar connection point. Not uh, included with the RV, but if you were to uh, purchase a solar kit that's sold separately, you would be able to connect it to this quick connect port here and begin using your solar system. There is also another point inside that I'll show you later where it's pre-wired for a head unit inside to monitor the solar system. Continue along, we'll just make note of the off-door side pre-wired rear view camera body here on the marker light. We'll open your off-door side of the uh, front storage compartment here. We'll see that we have your 30 amp power cord. This is what you would connect to the RV. This end would be connected to the uh, plug on your, in your trailer park or I guess if you had one at your house. Uh, most people do not have a 30 amp plug accessible uh, outside so generally what they would do is you would put a conversion block on the end of this so you could plug it into one of the 15 amp receptacles on the outside of your house. Uh, the only drawback to that is it doesn't give you the full 30 amps so you will not be able to run your air conditioning. Also in this storage compartment here we have your battery disconnect. Uh, what this does is disconnect your battery from the rest of the trailer so things do not put a draw on the battery, uh, basically killing it faster. However, with some of the new technology, um, like this unit has J command, so it's like a little computer screen that uh, runs all of your appliances and stuff, and any of the USB charging ports, they all draw a certain amount of power, so even with your battery disconnect, even with it engaged, you will still have some draw on the battery. Let's continue to make our way along the outside. The next thing that we'll come to will be your potable water fill point. So you undo the top here, put your garden hose in there, and fill your fresh water tank. You would use this if you're not gonna have a water supply. So basically, if you're not going to be connecting a garden hose to the city water connection, which I'll show you later, and you need water or you're wanting to use water, then you will fill the freshwater tank and use the onboard water pump to draw water from here. We will note that the drain for your freshwater tank is here. So if you wish to empty the water from it, you will open that there. And if you are filling your freshwater tank and you kind of walk away and forget about it, you might see water start pouring out of here. That doesn't mean that you've messed anything up. This is actually an overflow protection. So if you do overflow the freshwater tank, it'll just start coming out of here. So don't be too alarmed if you see water shooting out of the bottom while you're filling your freshwater tank. Okay, we'll open this. It's just a nice little storage area. It's kind of nice, little extra space. And then directly below here is where we have the output 
for your black and gray water tanks as well as the valve handles and valve locations of the black and your two gray water tanks. Just to the rear of this storage door we have your black water flush. So what you do is connect your garden hose to this connection point here and use it to flush out your black tank. It just helps maintain the uh, proper functioning of the uh, black water system and the sensors involved in, uh, in it. So here we have outside access to your hot water tank. You will see that we have your drain plug and your pressure relief valve. If you are ever removing this drain plug, especially when this is filled, when the hot water tank is filled with water and pressurized, you want to make sure you always uh, open the pressure relief valve like this. Now I currently, this unit is currently filled and uh, the water system is fully pressurized. So water came out when I opened it, but you'll want to open it and leave it open while you're removing the drain plug. If you don't, that drain plug is going to come shooting out at you pretty hard. All right, this is where you'd put the uh, orange end of your 30 amp power cord that I showed you earlier into your front storage compartment on the off door side. And right below that, we have your cable or satellite TV input. This is where you would put the RV park or from your home, I suppose. Uh, cable supply so you can have cable inside the RV. As we come around the back, I had mentioned before about the city water connection and here it is. This is uh, for uh, lack of a better way to put it, where you put the garden hose uh, from the campground or from your home. You screw that in here, you turn the water on and it fully pressurizes the RV so you can use the water system in the RV like you would the water system in your home. We have your outdoor shower here. And if we step back and look up, we had spoken about your pre-wired camera body for the side view cameras. And at the back, we have a pre-wired location for a rear view camera. All of these can be purchased separately. And all of these uh, cameras can be monitored from a screen inside the tow vehicle. We have ladder access to the roof. And we have a little outdoor kitchen. Really, it's more just a uh, fridge, which is handy. We have some nice lighting in here. We have a little prep area. There's a little drawer. And normally, just over here, like I showed you earlier, we would have your grill. So as we step back, let's to make note of one, Two speakers out underneath your awning. Those two speakers can be used in conjunction with the stereo inside the RV. Make it nice to listen to your radio if you're relaxing outside. Also under here we have the outdoor access to your refrigerator. This is actually acts as venting and must remain unobstructed so maximum airflow can be obtained in order for your refrigerator to operate properly. Something else I'd like to mention, the venting or the rain for your range hood is here and you will notice that it's closed up. There's these little tabs, one, two, that you have to open to allow the airflow. However, while traveling, you want to click those back in. We're coming to the end of our outside portion of our tour. I mentioned a couple more things. We have some accent lighting for your, under the stairs. We have an output for your cable or satellite as, along with 120 volt power source that uh, will allow you to watch TV underneath your awning. And we also have the exhaust for your furnace. Now it does say right on here that it is hot However, when it's underneath the uh, awning and there's a greater chance of uh, someone coming in contact with it, I always like to make sure and mention that this does get hot, so do not touch it.
All right. Let's open the door. We'll go inside and we'll take a look at what we have inside. As soon as we get through the door, one of the first things you'll see is the fire extinguisher. I like the placement just inside the door. That way it's readily accessible for any emergency need inside the RV but also accessible if you need it outside the RV as well. Well, we're here, another important piece of safety equipment is your carbon monoxide propane gas alarm. You'll see at the moment, there's a green light on the front that would indicate the system is operating properly. Just above that light, there's a little button. You can press that. The light will turn red. You'll hear a bunch of loud beeps. And then eventually it'll go back to green if your system is safe and operating properly. With these, it is important to note there are a couple things that can set them off, but the most common thing that uh, could make this sound without there actually being a reason to alarm uh, would be paint. Any, any fresh paint in and around the sensor uh, very likely will, uh, will set it off. If we look up just a little bit, we have the GFCI for the unit. At the moment, uh, there's no red light because I'm running off battery power. I'm not plugged in. Uh, if this is plugged into 120 volt power, you would see a little red light there if I were to trip this. However, if you find that you're without power and any of your uh, plugs on the counter, for instance, these neat little hidden plugs and some USB charging ports as well, if you find you're without power on the outside plugs, anything near water, in the bathroom, or on the counter, there's a good chance that this has been tripped. So you want to come here and press this test button and see if that fixes your problem. So a lot of important things just inside the door. We'll talk a little bit about. You have some switches here for your living room lights, as well as your awning light. And then right below here, we have your J command system your little uh, panel here when i mentioned earlier that even with the disconnect engaged there is uh, always a draw this is uh, one of the things that will always have a bit of a draw on your battery as long as it's connected to the rv so while we're here i'm not going to go into great detail i'm simply going to tell you how to navigate through the system so this top button on the side it allows you to switch from screen from See, we're on the motor screen, the AC main screen, settings, tanks, so on and so forth. So you see motors houses your awning and slide controls. And then once you're in this screen, you use the lower button to switch between items on the screen. And then once you have the item you want, you use these buttons to perform the action. So, retract. And it's retracting. We'll extend. There. Fully extended again. So you can use this to shuttle between all of the different screens or uh, you have some quick, quick buttons here, or quick action buttons. Uh, this one turns the lights on and off for uh, almost all of the trailer, not quite all of them, but the main lights. This one turns on the water pump so, and it will bring you to the water pump screen. It has a WP on it. And this one will uh, bring you to the temperature screen or to the screen that you can use to access the furnace or AC air conditioning. So if we go back to the heating screen, you'll see that the mode right now says off. We can use these buttons to cycle through and pick whether the furnace is on, the fans on, the AC is on. You can see the different choices. I don't want it to come on because it's hard to hear over. Also, you can hit the selector with the AC or furnace on. It'll let you hit this button and move up to the temperature and then use these buttons to control the temperature up and down. And you will notice that it's, it gives you the room, which is the actual current temperature, 65, and it'll give you what it, you have it set at, 70. The last thing I'll mention when I'm in here is your 
settings, there's a pair device. And this is the area that you'll need access to in order to pair your cell phone to this RV. It's kind of handy. It allows you to be outside the RV while putting the slide in and out, turning lights on and off, putting the awning in and out. So it is a fairly useful feature. You can download the J Command app. And then once downloaded, you can follow the instructions on your screen uh, that will walk you through how to connect your device to this system. Moving on to the bedroom, we'll notice that we have USB connectivity here. As far as uh, charging ports go, you have 120 volt power as well. And then a night light. When we're outside at the front, we made mention of the connection point for your pre-wired solar. And here is the pre-wired area for your head unit that I mentioned when we were out there. And this will allow you to monitor the uh, system. Also in the bedroom, we have a mounting location marked on the wall for a TV bracket, as well as input for cable or satellite and your 120 volt power. Also on this side, in the bedroom, is the emergency exit. It's important to, to know how to operate the emergency exit. So we'll press down on the black tab, push the red handle up and out, bringing the handle perpendicular to the wall of the trailer or the window itself, and then push it all the way out until it is fully out of the RV. At that point, you can pull the red tab on the screen to remove it and you may escape to safety. You'll notice that on this side of the bed, we also have the USB charging, night light, and 120 volt power as well. While we're in the bedroom, take a minute to show you the prop supported under bed storage. And you'll notice that we have your side tables that will work with your chairs. I'll show you that in a minute. So as we come into the main area of the RV, you'll see there's lots of storage. And we'll turn around, take a look at your stove here first and your range. It's important to note when lighting this, always make sure you open the glass and we fully remove it from the area. I would hate to see somebody get a brand new trailer and uh, light the burners with the uh, top down and have the glass shatter on them. Also though, before you pack up and leave, make sure you travel with this down as well. So with it open, it's pretty simple to light. Turn each knob individually to the light position then turn the sparking knob and you have fire. Same goes for all three of these and the oven actually operates in the same way. The only difference is one, always make sure you open the oven before you try to light it. Two, turn to the light position. At this point though, you have to press and hold the knob in while you turn the sparking knob. All right, take a look at the refrigerator. We have the standard on off button, and then we have the ability to switch between auto and gas mode. In auto mode, it will automatically select between gas or electric electricity, uh, automatically selecting electricity if it's present. In the gas mode, it will only function on gas. Something to note, Oftentimes, when you go to light your refrigerator, it uh, it doesn't always light on the first try, especially if uh, it's the first time lighting it when it hasn't been on in a little bit. Usually, it's just a pressure issue. What I would do, you turn it off, you go to the front, make sure the bottles are open out front, do a few other things, then come back in, give it a, just basically give it a minute. Often it's just a matter of not enough pressure to light the appliance the first time you try to light it. If we drop down below there, we'll make note of your power center. This is where you'll find your breakers, like you'd see in your house, and they operate in pretty much the same way. And your 
fuses. These fuses will look and operate much the same way as they will in your vehicle. The other thing to note here about the fuses, you will see along here an LED light that lights up if the fuse is blown or the circuit is not functioning properly. Okay, we're going to step over and take a look at your TV. First thing I'll show you is that there is a pull chain in here. It can be hard to get, but it pull that, that releases the lock right here on the TV and that will give you access to all your connections on the back and it will also give you access to the button right here that will switch you between cable or your antenna. So if you're trying to watch TV via your antenna, you have to have the light on this side. If you're trying to watch it with cable or satellite, it needs to be over here. Uh, basically, there's a signal booster that interferes with the cable or satellite signal if it's on. So that's all you're doing there. Put the TV back in. You don't have to be very forceful. It's pretty, uh, pretty light click there. That's in as much as it needs to be. I always just tuck this back in so it doesn't get caught in your drawer here when you open and close it. So right below your TV we have your stereo. The stereo offers a, an auxiliary port, HDMI, USB for charging purposes, as well as Bluetooth connectivity options. And it also has two zones. Zone 1 would be the inside of the RV. Zone 2 would be the speakers that I showed you earlier. Inside your bunks here. I'm not going to crawl all the way up, but you can see back in the corner there. You have a 120 volt power, a nice little shelf, and two USB charging ports. And on the lower bunk, we have the exact same thing. On the bottom of the upper bunk, accessible to the lower bunk, I'm going to show you this right here, this little lock, and in a few minutes I will show you why I showed you that little lock. So why did I show you that lock? This folds up to give you either storage for larger items or access to the underneath of the bunk here at the bottom, which is where you'll find your hot water tank. I'm going to actually lock this up to here, but it's done via this little tab right here. That swing in there, that is connected to that locking point that I showed you earlier. However, for our purposes, we'll leave it down. So I'm gonna remove the netting here, just on the one side, it's pretty easy to do. And I'm gonna crawl underneath. And I'll show you this access panel that was right here. I removed it by undoing the two Red Robertson screws. And now it will give us access to the back of the hot water tank. At this point, you can see that the hot water tank has two valves, one and two. These two valves are what we use to switch it between what you'd call a winterizing mode or a bypass mode and summer mode. In winterizing or bypass mode, these valve handles would be turned in this direction and water would flow through this tube and back out this direction and right back out, thus bypassing your hot water tank so you don't fill it full of antifreeze as you really don't need to. But if for everyday use of your hot water tank you want the water to flow into the hot water tank. So the position of the valve handles now pointing into the hot water tank and the water will now flow through the hot water tank and you can use it exactly like you would the hot water tank in your house. And we'll take a look at the rest of the RV here. We have another emergency exit, a little different than the first. This one, you merely simply flip up these two handles. There's no screen to remove. The window just opens and you're free to leave. We have a pretty standard bathroom, as 
like I showed you before, the GFCI plug was over there. So in the event that the GFCI was tripped, this plug should not be uh, functional. Nice size bathroom. So a couple other things I want to show you before I leave, or before we we leave each other here and the video is done. One would be the baffles on the AC here. With them closed, it will force the majority of the air through these ports that are located throughout the RV. However, with this open like that, all of the air will now fall directly down here, which, given its position in front of the stove, isn't a bad idea if you're cooking in here and it's hot out. I would also like to show you your water pump. I've already removed the four Red Robertson screws to make it a little bit easier. And we'll see your water pump here. A couple things to note. One, this is your field tube right here. It is used when you're winterizing your trailer. This end would be placed into your jug of antifreeze with the this valve handle here pointed in line with the fill tube then your water pump would be drawing water from your um, antifreeze jug now if we put this valve handle back the way it was it is now going to draw from the freshwater tank and as we explained earlier that is what you would use if there is not a city water connection at wherever you're camping basically if there isn't a garden hose to hook to your city water connection then you're going to need to use your fresh water tank that does it for our video orientation i hope you found it informative there's a lot to look at a lot to explore so once you get your new rv take a look around and then if there is something that you needed to know more about and i didn't cover it we can still help you give us a call and we'd be happy to answer all your questions for you Thank you very much and enjoy.